From rolling hills to vibrant meadows, Connecticut boasts a rich tapestry of barns and agricultural relics, each whispering stories of a bygone era. These rustic structures with their weathered exteriors, their charming silhouettes, they stand as enduring symbols of the state's bucolic past. Hey everyone, in this mini-series, we're going to be walking through the process of designing a real barn for a real client. However, this barn will not be for raising cattle or storing hay. This barn is going to be used as a workshop, an extended living space, an indoor recreational space during the harsh Connecticut winters, and an office space for my client. Of course, we'll be walking through the tools and the processes that I use in order to get from concept to construction documents. We'll be using a whole lot of Revit, We'll be using a whole lot of twin motion. And of course, we'll still be using pens and paper and trace as well. There's kind of two main goals when it comes to this mini series. The first is to show you the process and give you tips and tricks on my techniques on how I design a ground up real world project. The second is to show you how these tools can help efficiently and effectively navigate through design options. Because this project has a lot of design options going on. What you'll notice as this series evolves is the original concept versus the final concept, how dramatically different they are. And so what I really want you to take away from this is how tools like Revit and Twinmotion allow us to efficiently make these changes and work collaboratively with our clients, but we can still produce high quality deliverables and communicate our designs in an effective manner. So with all that being said, let's get started. Welcome to episode one of the Modern Barn series. So as you can see, I still tend to start my process with pen and paper or trace or sometimes that toned paper that I really like working with. Because this is a standalone building, not as much to work with as far as existing conditions other than the site itself. And so in this episode, what we're going to cover is we're actually going to cover building the existing site model, but then also building a diagram of our party from these sketches that I have here um, into Revit. So before we jump into the diagram and sort of the concept that I'm going with in this very first scheme, we'll dive a little bit into the site and talk a little bit about it. So you can see here, this site is actually up on top of a pretty big hill in Connecticut here. It's almost 500 feet elevation above sea level. Uh, it's a pretty intensely sloped site towards the west. Um, but that is also the view. So when it comes to the actual design and the, the concept wrapped around this, this, this multifunctional barn space, um, there's sort of two things that we're gonna keep in mind. First is the view to the west, which is an absolutely beautiful view of the river and the rolling hills of Connecticut. And then also the connection with this existing traditional colonial house and the space between it. And so that's kind of what we're going to focus on. And so in order to start the diagramming to explain our concept to the client, we do need to model the site. So the first thing we're going to do is just bring in an existing survey. Now, this survey didn't have contour maps. Um, so this was just used for property lines and getting the buildings. Uh, scaled it using the scale on it. And then I brought in a contour map from local GIS. So there's GIS that had a satellite image with contours over it. Now, if you guys have seen my videos before, um, I'll put a link below, but I use a tool called Auto Clicker to quickly uh, draw in my contours. So what I'm doing here is real simple. I'm just typing the contours, uh, 300, 400, 500, whatever it says. And then I'm just tracing my um, topography. And when I click finish, boom, I've got myself a nice topography. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to um, draw subregions or subdivisions now if you're using Revit 2024 and I'm going to give them uh, different materials. Um, this is for not only the visual of the diagram, um, but this is also for when I use twin motion to make uh, renderings and a live scene um, by having different materials, I can use things like uh, scatter vegetation and so on. So here you go. You could see me grabbing the driveway, uh, the property line and the 
in interior of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply materials. One I'm going to call just a grass um, uh, or a, a grass for the overall uh, for the, around the surrounding of the object of the building. I'm going to do one called grass forest or property. Um, and then I'm going to do one for my asphalt. And again, the reason for this is so that I can use uh, tools like Twin Motion and also generate some really good visuals of my topography. And now just like that, I've got a topography um, that's accurate enough uh, for this early stage of it that now I can start massing my concept against it and getting a feel for how all of these things are going to work out and work together. Now that we have a topographic model and we get a sense of the landscape that we're fitting into, it's time to start looking at the actual diagram of the building and start to understand the party and the concept and the layout of what I'm thinking. As I mentioned in the intro, this project started with one scheme and kind of morphed into a completely other scheme. So what we're talking about today with this concept is actually the first scheme, very beginning, <laughs> and the uh, inspiration for the actual exterior, which we'll, we'll go through in the next episode when we're using Twin Motion and making the renderings, was sort of a Scandinavian, sleek, modern barn design. The concept itself was meant to be very simple. Initially a one-story building, with basically two programmatic spaces, an office and a workshop slash garage. So the concept was really to create this flex space in the middle with the desire to potentially use it for other things in the future, whether it be a storage space, whether it would be a toilet room, um, whether it would be uh, some sort of flexible wall so that you can adjust based on the function and the form. So it was a really simple concept. The idea here is to use Revit to generate a concept diagram that is easily representable to the client. So my goal with this initial presentation is to pre present two simple floor plans, a concept diagram, and then some renderings of the idea. And so that's what we're planning on getting to. So with that, let's jump into Revit and I'll show you how to turn these sketches that you've seen into a digestible concept diagram really quickly and simply, and some tips and tricks along the way on how to make these diagrams inside of Revit. So I'm actually going to be using an in-place component for this. Not a mass, but a component. And you'll see what I have here is a grid system. I just kind of created a general grid with the idea of the overall length. And I'm going to actually draw extrusions. It's a simple shape. It's basically a traditional house shape. So I'm going to draw extrusions and I'm going to make these, these forms um, basically solid filled forms in order to, to create this massing for the diagram. So what I'm doing here is just doing an extrusion in place. I assigned a material to it. You can see I'm working in 3D, uh, which is very helpful here. And then I'm gonna set the work plane to my front face so I can do that house shape. So again, it's just a rectangle on the floor, then just a triangle um, on the floor, level one. There's a triangle on the first face and you can see I'm going up a specific distance um, and just kind of quickly making this, this roof shape. Yes, I could technically have drawn that on a horizontal, but I was using the floor plan to um, generate the space that I wanted. And then I combine the two, the triangle and the rectangle, and uh, I'm copying them in uh, three different places now uh, to represent sort of that workshop, office, and then this flex space in the middle. And so here I am just using reference planes to determine the, the width of that workshop in the middle. Now I can use that shape. You can see I've got these three shapes and I can start playing with these and applying different materials. And just like that, I'm starting to actually make a three-dimensional version of that diagram that I was just sketching. A nice, easy way to understand this concept in an extremely quick fashion. Now I'm just making a couple materials, uh, just shaded view materials to change the color in, in, the, in the shaded view that I'm, I'm showing it in. Gotta have a hot pink. Yellow and hot pink are just my colors for some reason when it comes to diagrams. Now you can see real quickly in this three-dimensional axon, you could see the office space is yellow, the flex space is pink, and the, um, the workshop is blue. So just right away, you can already see this party diagram coming to life. Now what I'm gonna do here is just give it a little something extra by pulling out that uh, overhang um, really quickly. Um, just for that visual graphic, you can see that sort of Scandinavian feel to it as well. Um, and then just to give you a sense of, of the ends of these, pro of these buildings, 
So that's just a void extrusion on each side um, to cut into the space. Then there's also a lean to. This was something that the owner really wants is a, a space to, to park outside, um, whether it's his boats or whether it's his car. Um, so here's a little lean to on the one side. Again, just using extrusions for this quick mass. Um, part of the reason for extrusions is because then I can make this really nice thick line work, which looks kind of like a vector graphic um, at the end of the day. Now I'm just changing the phasing of them so that they exist um, in an earlier phase. Also going to add some columns. Again, not necessary for this specific diagram, but there is this deck that's going to be um, pushed out towards the view. And uh, I wanted to make sure that it represented as a deck. And so just adding these columns here is something subtle that can really, really help you, uh, your, your user, your end user, understand what you're trying to show there. Now here's where we make the diagram. So you'll notice I'm using a crop region. I'm, 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 I'm pulling in the crop region so you can see the existing house in the diagram. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the scale and I'm gonna change the silhouette edges, okay? So by cranking the scale way, way, way down and by adding extremely thick silhouette edges, what you can do is you can start making that that thick vector line on the, on the outside. You do need to make sure that anti-aliasing is on And then here I'm just adjusting the contours for the topography. Um, so this way they're not as just solid lines. So I'm, I'm changing the primary and the secondary contours so they're not right in your face. Now here I'm using a railing um, to, to generate an arrow that's gonna show the diagram of of uh, where where the driving path is going to be and so on and so forth. The reason I'm using a railing is because the railing will actually follow the topography. So it's a nice way to to diagrammatically show things like flow of traffic or whatnot. Here I'm just doing a site wall, which is a, an important feature because the driveway sort of runs along the site wall. It's an existing beautiful stone wall um, that that sort of marks the edge of that property line and marks the edge of that uh, that pathway up to this building. Now you'll see here I go. I'm just drawing in. A, uh, railing path and so this is actually a dotted uh, a railing with with an arrowhead on it um, just a custom railing family I'm gonna curve the ends here and again the nice thing about the railing is that it it can host to the topo surface and then I'll just change the size of some of those those dashes and whatnot to give it a more diagrammatic look you can see there's there's the inside look at the railing family itself I apparently didn't make the initial one uh, parametric as far as the width of that, so I was just quickly tweaking it. Now you can see you're starting to get something that has this nice diagrammatic feel to it. I'll add another one to show how you can get into the lean-to from the back side. That was another interesting thing is the approach to this building comes from the front and wraps around the back if you're coming in a car and using the, using the actual workspace of the lean-to. And then here I'm just adjusting the railing so that it visually looks good in the axon. That's all. <laughs> so I want to make sure that I can see the end of the railing, even though in plan it may look a little silly in an ortho plan. But right now I'm just making it look good for this axon. And there you have it. That's how quickly you can generate a concept diagram in Revit using nothing but extrusions. Super cool, right? I think so. Hopefully that shows you a unique way to present your design and your concept schemes. So again, the whole idea here is that the initial uh, presentation, I wanna have a simple floor plan. I wanna have this concept diagram to show the flex space, the office and the workshop. And then I also wanna have a couple photorealistic renderings. So in our next episode, we're gonna be converting this mass into something that is more of a building using walls, doors, and windows. And then we will be generating some renderings for some in, in a real time scene in twin motion for presentations. So hopefully you guys are excited for this series. Hopefully you enjoyed this first episode. If you did, please subscribe. Thank you to Autodesk for supporting this series. And with that, um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.